Honourable Chairperson, the President tells us in his Sona address that there has been great progress in turning around law enforcement bodies. But even with the most rose-tinted spectacles available, this cannot be seen to be true. The President told us last year that critical well, leadership positions would be filled with capable, experienced and trustworthy professionals. The President acts surprised when he tells us that the re revelations from the Zondo Commission of Inquiry have laid bare the extent of state capture and related corruption, and the fact that the criminal justice system has been compromised and weakened. But, Chairperson, the vast majority of this evidence was available in the public domain long before the Zondo Commission was set up. It's the very fact that this information was in the public domain that led to the Zondo Commission being set up in the first place. So this evidence or information is nothing new. Investigative journalists and public interest organizations warned us of these activities long before anyone else. Copious and detailed evidence and documentation was published by Amabungane, the Scorpio, and Daily Vemerick revealing the extent of the corruption and malaise of the upper echelons of the ANC long before the Commission was even dreamt of. During this time, President Ramaphosa was the Deputy President of South Africa, gaily chairing the Cader Deployment Committee, enabling state capture by deploying those very Caders who have been implicated in the Zondo Commission, those very Caders who hollowed out, those very Caders who hollowed out and decimated the criminal justice system by design. It is this committee that deployed the likes of Similane, Jiba, and the hapless Sean Abrams. It is this committee that deployed the likes of Arthur Fraser to the head of correctional services, despite his dismal and dishonest term of office at the State Security Agency. The President promises us last Sona, no less, that the establishment of an national, sorry, anti-corruption advisory council, supposedly a multi-sectoral body that would oversee the initial implementation of the strategy and the establishment and uh, independence of an independent statutory anti-corruption body that reports to Parliament, was imminent. Well, that did not happen. Applications were invited late last year with no discernible progress having been made. There is no credible information available to suggest that the Council has been formed or even will be formed in a foreseeable future. Despite the appointment of a very small handful of apparently capable, experienced and trustworthy professionals at the MPA, we've seen not even one successful prosecution of a high-profile corruption, money laundering and racketeering case, dis despite the Schmorgas board of choice to pick from. Not one. The MPA is so damaged, so hollowed out and so rudderless that no discernible progress has been reported in the past three years. The revelations of the Zondo Commission, the revelations of the Zondo Commission will produce a deluge of serious high profile and complex cases requiring prosecution. But thanks again to the deployment policies of the committee chaired by the President, no one can likely look forward to prosecutions following this regard anytime soon. And the ones suffering the most are the poor and the most vulnerable. For, furthermore, the budget of the NPA and the police have been reduced yet again, making it impossible for them to deliver successfully uh, complex investigations or to appoint any resources, human or otherwise, required to successfully prosecute these cases. Neither institution has the budget to procure the forensic or cyber forensic skills required to prosecute successfully. It's simply not going to happen. The President tells us he will present a plan of action in response to the recommendations made by the Zondo Commission by June 2022 and present it to this Parliament. June, honourable members. The only logical reason for this long delay must be found in the fact that the President wants to be elected as the leader of the ANC at the end of the year. Enabling the relevant authorities to put a large number of his comrades in jail will not enhance his chances and so, true to form, he's kicking the can down the road. The President stated that he has set up mechanisms to monitor implementation of the recommendations made by the SIU in relation to corruption and fraud in the COVID-19 PPE-related contracts. 
Yet the SIU has largely not been paid the outstanding fees for such investigations, making this difficult and eventually impossible for it to continue to function optimally. By design, of course. The President tells us that he is expecting the investigating directorate of the MPA to deliver on its mandate. A new head of the directorate will be appointed following the departure of Advocate Grunier. It's almost three years into the five-year lifespan and has not made one arrest. It has not taken one accused to court. And there is no reason to believe that this will be done so in the future. The President tells us that he will encourage engagement with the judiciary for the creation of a special courts role for state capture and corruption cases. The court roles are already overloaded. The case log con backlog continues to grow on a daily basis. How is this ever going to be achieved? And even if it does, all the rape cases and murder cases of ordinary South Africans will just become part of a growing backlog and further delay justice so that we can first deal with those who abused their powers whilst the ANC was in government. Chairperson, the Democratic Alliance has, in cooperation with Accountability Now, drafted a private member's bill that will be placed before Parliament to establish an anti-corruption commission that will satisfy the strict requirements for, independent, requirements for independence as set out in the Glenister judgments, and that will enable the successful investigation that will enable the successful investigation and speedy prosecution of complex and high-profile corruption and state capture cases, and that will deliver tangible results proving that crime does not pay. If the President is truly serious about dealing with corruption and turning the, just, the criminal justice system around, then he and his cabinet will support this legislation. This will be his last opportunity to fulfill a promise of any nature. Chairperson, the ancient founders of the idea of democracy believed that there are three principles that a democratic government must always obey. Always govern according to the law, always govern in the best interest of the people, and always remember that your power will come to an end. I fear for your part that that day has come. And the Democratic Alliance and many others on these benches stand ready to take hands and build this country on these principles and those principles of our Constitution. I thank you.